Uh, welcome back, everyone. I have the privilege of being next to Jennifer O'Malley Dillon. She not only worked on one presidential campaign, but actually five presidential campaigns. So we, it's a real honor to have you on Liberal Live. Um, I'll just ask you to, to give a sense to our viewers who you are and what you do. I read your bio and it's too long for me to repeat. So we'll go to let you say to the people who you are and what you do. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And um, as you mentioned, I have uh, spent a lot of time doing presidential work uh, in the United States. I was most recently the deputy campaign manager for President Obama's campaign. Before that, I ran the National Democratic Party as the executive director. And then I actually was on President Obama's 2008 campaign and ran all of his battleground states. And I've just started a consulting firm called Precision Strategies. So very excited to be here and have a lot of shared experiences to talk about today. So let me start with the first question and then I'll go to Bernadette. Um, obviously, uh, lessons learned from the Obama campaign. I mean, uh, everyone is going to be taking out their pen and paper to make <laughs> sure that they, someone who's been so successful and you've contributed to that success. Uh, just give us a bit of lessons learned. Five things that come to your mind and say, if you want to win, that's the recipe. Oh, God, putting me on the spot. <laughs> well, I don't know that I can narrow it down to just five, but, you know, I would certainly say at the top of the list is grassroots organizing and that the heart and soul of our success um, were our volunteers and our supporters. And I would say, um, you know, using that and, and technology, um, the new technology uh, on digital, social media, communicating to people in the way that they want to connect with uh, campaigns is critical. I think having a very strong organization that is um, driven from the bottom up, so not one national plan, but a plan that's very sure. unique to the communities that people live in, um, and then connecting to people in their own lives so that you are um, really helping them communicate to their friends and their family in the best way possible. Sure. But let me join in Bernadette, who is the co-host of that uh, of the Liberal Live, and, and uh, we've been doing that for what, <laughs> now about 12 hours together, <laughs> so we've been... Uh, so, Bernadette, maybe you want to go for a question to Jennifer. Sure. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you. We're very happy to have you here in Canada. Happy to be here. Yes. And so we're getting questions online as well. We okay. had some in advance of your uh, appearance here on the show because obviously your work with President Obama is very exciting to us and uh, we want to learn from that. So if you can tell us um, what, what can be translated into a Canadian context from the work that you were doing. Absolutely. You know, I think so much at the core, and, and we were just talking about this, um, the importance of thinking about people, um, the people that are here at, as part of this convention, and how they are communicating and connecting with the campaign and really building a campaign structure that allows you to support them and the conversations that they're having every day. You know, I think so many people talk about the presidential campaign in the United States and say, well, you know, we, we had a lot of resources, we had a lot of time, it was a very unique experience. And that's absolutely true. But at the end of the day, some of that core, the core principles that are best practices and how you communicate with people um, translate across the country, in the United States, across the globe, sure. and certainly here in what you're already doing. Mm -hmm. Let me build upon what Bernadette was asking. I mean, we have thousands of viewers uh, across Canada, perhaps even some in the United States and abroad. Um, people would be asking themselves, you know, how can they do to help the Liberal Party of Canada, building upon your experience and say, I sit at home in Nova Scotia, in Newfoundland or Quebec, and say, okay, so building upon your experience of engaging so many millions of people in your case, um, what are the steps that come to your mind that someone who wants to get engaged uh, can do? Absolutely, a great question. And I think there's so much that can be done if you are in your own community and in your own lives. So first, you know, get informed. Find out what kind of opportunities exist in your own community. Um, other like-minded people that are also interested in getting engaged. Um, something like inviting them to your house to talk about um, issues, to talk about different meetings that might be taking place. But then make sure you check out the website, which you have a great, wonderful, vibrant online community as is seen from this convention but there's a lot of opportunity to connect with other people that you might not even know exist in your own community and the value of what you say to your friends and family just cannot be uh, overstated it is it is really at the end of the day what is going to bring new people into the process and new people to support the party so to get more technical some of us follow you on twitter because <laughs> we're very interested in your in your experience with president obama and you talk a lot about data data driven ground game 
So what does that mean in terms, in lay terms? What does that, how important is data as we move forward into an election period? You know, it's never more important than people, but it is a critical component to successful organizing because what data does is it allows us to more efficiently um, communicate with people about what they want to hear. So when we talk about data-driven campaigns, we talk about thinking about um, the people that exist out there that, um, you know, maybe are on the fence. They're yeah, swing sure. voters, they're not sure. interested, um, you know, necessarily every day in politics. So how do we communicate with them? And understanding from a data perspective what issues they care about um, by asking those questions sure. and keeping track of them so that you can talk to people about the things that they care about and that they really want to hear um, from the campaign and from the party. Do you struggle with privacy issues and maintaining all of that data? Good yeah, it's a great question. You know, um, in the United States, that the whether uh, your participation in voting is, is public information, and um, in particular, we ask people to opt in, so they are setting their own, sure. um, you know, uh, limitations and comfort levels that we are working with. And so, you know, it, it's less a problem uh, in the United States, and something that we're very mindful of, and want to make sure that it's driven by the people we're talking to and not um, by us. Let me build upon that, so that because I'm sure I'm always relating to the people and like Bernadette and I you are underground and, and doing stuff in our community. What, what is the key data? If you'd say, you know, uh, collecting data is something, but first, how do you collect data based on your best experience and what kind of data really makes a difference? You know, I, I think that it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish, but, you know, having one central place that you're putting all of that data into right. so that you're not looking at a piece of data, you're looking at a person. And right. you understand if they want to volunteer, uh, if they are interested in being a, a, a donor, um, perhaps they've said to you, education is really a critical issue for sure. us. And so that allows you to really talk sure. to them about education as opposed to maybe another issue that's less important. So I think there's a number of different pieces that are of value and making sure that you're thinking about someone just like you think about a friend or a family member when it comes to data, so you're looking at a whole person. So we're getting questions online. Yeah. Thank you. People are responding. Um, obviously, they're very thrilled by your, your, your being here and your success. And they want to know about um, in community engagement. You mentioned that earlier. So how specifically can we do that? How do we maintain and go and seek new people who've maybe never been involved with the political process at all? Sure. Absolutely. Well, that was one of the biggest challenges that President Obama had especially in 2008 where he um, was less known and he was really talking to people that weren't traditionally sure. the mm -hmm. party activists. And so um, I think what people can do in their own communities is share their story about why they are doing the work that they're doing, why they believe mm -hmm. so much in this process that they're volunteering their time um, and how that connects to them and how easy it is. And also, I mean, let's not forget, we want campaigns to be fun. And the experience of being together sure. with other people that are um, also working hard is, is a great experience and one that's really enjoyable. Thank you for mentioning that. I, I think it's important that, that we say that there is a joy in yes. politics. <laughs> there um, must be. We, we uh, <laughs> live in a world where negative uh, messages and images seem to gain a lot of traction very easily. And I'm sure that's the same in the in the U.S. context. So, yeah. how do you fight against that? Yeah, you know, it's such a great question, and I think, um, you know, you you watch the news, and all you hear is True. about the negative um, things that are taking place, or gridlock and partisan divide, and um, and that's really hard to break through. But I think that what is is we always say is a candidate and a party can bring someone to the office or to the the event but it's the people there that are going to keep them coming back. And it is that experience, the shared experience of being part of a team, working for a goal together, um, and the values that you share across the board that you know people really sure. find a relationships and friendships. I happen to meet my husband on a campaign, so wow. I'm, I'm a big fan. Oh, well, there's a plug. <laughs> Building a stronger exactly. community starts at e home. Exactly. I love that. Exactly, exactly. Let me ask you, when, um, when you look at the Canadian political landscape, and in particular the Liberal Party of Canada, based from uh, your own experience and lessons learned from the campaign, what are the two, three things that come to your mind that you think we could even do better, you know, to really make a difference? We're preparing for 2015, we're full speed ahead. This weekend is about building the plan, building the team. What do you think would be your advice? Two, three pieces of advice say you guys should focus on that. Well, I, I first would say I think what you're doing right now is great. I mean, I, I had a chance when I landed last night to watch some of uh, your show, actually, uh, and it was great. Um, but also, you know, to see the energy and excitement, to, ta to hear what you're talking about in terms of building a plan and building a team and thinking about how you can do today the, the necessary building blocks for the election sure. in 2015. So I think you're right on track. I think you know prioritizing, organizing, sure 
showing people in this room and out in the community, um, you know, online, what they can do in their own homes and in their own lives to participate. Um, I would say keep doing that and making it easy, making it easy for people to participate and be part of the process. Thank you, Jennifer. We have uh, thousands of Canadians watching online and we have a community desk here. So we have three people who are engaging with uh, people online, Twitter and Facebook. And so we're going to move over to Andre because there's a lot of reaction to what you've been saying. Okay. And so we'll talk to Andre now. Great. <laughs> so, but, and, and, it, and, and most people are, are really in agreement too and, and I think that's the, the great part about it it's that uh, people are, are really interested in the process and taking part and so there is a part of a curiosity but also wanting to learn and, and, and to get better at it um, so we can actually form a Liberal government 2015 uh, so we've, um, we've had a, a, a few good points about engaging youth, for example, and how important it was for the um, Obama campaign and uh, how we're seeing with, with Justin as leader that there definitely is a movement amongst youth uh, to get involved and to, to take part. Alors, juste rapidement en français aussi, je viens de dire comment que euh, la foule, euh, l'auditoire en ligne est bien d'accord avec ce qu'on entend avec euh, notre invité comment que les gens sont intéressés par le processus politique et sont curieux et veulent apprendre et, et s'améliorer justement pour pouvoir en prendre part et aider Justin et l'équipe libérale à former un gouvernement en 2015. Alors, on est vraiment en train de se préparer et de bâtir l'équipe, bâtir un plan que nous tous, on pourra apporter et présenter aux Canadiens et Canadiennes euh, très bientôt. Donc, euh, c'est ça. Je retourne la balle, François-Philippe et Bernadette. <rire> So André was just summing up in French what you've been telling us. We live in a country where French is very important and uh, we want our Francophone viewers to be able to understand what you've been telling us as well. One other question we've had from online is, what is the importance of celebrity in political organizing? Um, we have uh, a leader here in Canada who uh, is uh, very charismatic of the Liberal Party and very, and very popular. Um, President Obama has had very, very great moments of popularity and certainly went into that campaign very, very strong and very uh, aware of, um, of his stature in the community. How important is all of that? You know, I think that I'll spend a lot of time today talking about tactics and organizing and all of that's incredibly important, but at the end of the day, um, those tactics can only get you so far if you don't have a strong, dynamic candidate with a vision for the country and for the future. And I think that that's at the core of President Obama's success. It, it was less tactics and more who he was and, and the type of leader he was going to be. And I think that's the same case here with uh, Justin Trudeau. That was an online question, so thank you for that. And we're going to uh, send it back to Andre, who has uh, further questions from further questions. online. Um, yes, we just got, I mean, there, there's a number of them. I think the, the, the most recent uh, the most qu recent question being from, uh, from Robin. Uh, and we were just talking about data. So uh, how granular should the data be regarding individual voter interests that may motivate them? You know, should um, data be more uh, at the local versus uh, national? And, and anyways, very technical data yes. question <laughs> that I will leave off to you. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think there's some good presentations taking sure. place um, at this, uh, this weekend on data. And, you know, at the end of the day, you certainly can get very granular. Um, but I think that the thing that's most important to the people um, that are, are watching now and participating in their homes is really to think about people and the things that, that matter in your own life or the things that are going to matter in a political campaign. Um, you know, are they moms? Are they dads? Do they have, you know, exactly. young kids? Um, and what are the issues that they care about and how that relates to the campaign? So while having specific data is very helpful to understand that better, at the end of the day, you're really talking about just the, the basic interactions that you would have in your own lives and how to think about that. Let me build upon that because I noted in your bio that your daughters were born exactly <laughs> a week after the 2012 election. So I was relating to Justin <laughs> yesterday. So why don't, I mean, we probably have a lot of moms and, and people who are kind of struggling the family and the involvement and in politics yeah. and all that. Give us one or two, um, you know, I would not say advice, but certainly maybe anecdotes from the campaign that you would want to share with our live audience now <laughs> that they say, you, you were uh, obviously pregnant during a lot of that time yeah. and you had success on both counts. So. <laughs> 
Give well, us your recipe. I, I don't know that I have a recipe to any, any mom and any dad out there. It's never easy. But a funny anecdote is that I actually, the day after the election, went to the hospital because uh, I had a high, my blood pressure was high because of the stress of the election. Sure. And when I got there, the day after the election, the doctor's like, your blood pressure's gone down. You're fine. <laughs> so I related that Success. story to the president that next day after the election, and he's to taking credit for the fact that my blood pressure went down, <laughs> that I could uh, wait an extra week before delivering the girl. So uh, I don't know that I'd give him that, but he was, he was very happy about it. But, uh, you know, there is no easy way to juggle family and work no matter what you do. Um, but, you know, knowing that every day you get to do something that you not only believe in, but are, um, you know, I believe will make the lives of my daughters better is um, enough to, to make any hard times better. So what is President Obama's view of Canada? In your discussions with him or in conversations with him, what is his awareness of Canada or his feelings towards Canada? Well, I, I can't speak on behalf of the president or the administration, but certainly, you know, I know that he, um, you know, was speaking yesterday, um, you know, with the, the current leadership here in Canada, and, and clearly we have a very close relationship, and, uh, and so, you know, I'll let him speak for himself, but, uh, you know, just uh, continue to be proud of the work that President Obama is doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There's a big rivalry on our... Uh Oh, our God, hockey teams, I know. you understand. I know. So, well, and you're I between two Canadians now. <laughs> well, congratulations on the big win yesterday. I was a little heartbroken, but very happy for you. I am um, sad to say, or happy to say, that my presentation comes right in the middle of the hockey game. Oh, so my I'm God. just hoping that it doesn't end um, before I finish. So, but good luck. I think we're gathering some, uh, some more questions. questions. Yes. Do you want to? Here, how important was engaging youth? So we did talk about that. I guess what you said to that is that people's personal stories matter a lot, even in terms of attracting membership in a party. Yeah, and you know, I think with young people, the other thing to think about is that um, you know they engage in in their lives differently than, say, my mother, um, who's a wonderful woman, but watches the news every night, and she's been doing that every every year um, for most of her life. Young people don't do that. They communicate um, via social media. They're sure. hearing from their friends. And so you really, for us as a campaign and for you as a party, have to think about how do you reach people where they are, and young people in particular, that it's not as easy maybe to find them at a home sure. uh, or they don't receive mail as regularly, sure. um, and making that information dynamic so that it really breaks through all of the clutter that's out there. And do you engage with women in the, in the same way as you would with the men as well in terms of engaging people? Sure, um, you know, but we had a very robust uh, Women for Obama effort and really, you know, women are at the heart of so many decisions in the household. Um, they are, you know, they, they obviously care about the same issues men do, but they have some different touch points. So thinking about women a little bit differently um, and communicating directly to them, creating ways to make it easier for moms to go volunteer sure, exactly. with their That's kids, the you know, issue. thinking about all of that. Give us uh, one or two highlights. You'd obviously say winning winning the election was probably one of the biggest highlights, considering you know that you were pregnant at, at the time. But give us one or two highlights. And I'm getting a bit personal on these questions. I'm sure the audience is, is really trying to, you know, people are always fascinated about people like you who've been at the center of, of, of the action and have made a difference in, in, in the, the history of a country. Uh, our, our southern neighbors. So give us one or two highlights, uh, personal anecdotes that people sure. would relate to. Well, you know, one thing that I'm so proud of is the work that we did in between campaigns on Obamacare. And I know that it's not always uh, the easiest thing to talk about in our country, but um, I'm so proud of the work the president did, how he fought through that. And, and as part of the National Democratic Party, um, we were very engaged in that effort. And so that's one of the things that I'm most proud of. Um, you know, and I think as much as I am so excited that we won the election, I'm so excited about how we won the election. Mm -hmm. Being able to participate in something that was positive, that was about the future, um, and really put people first and at the center of our organization um, is something that I believe is how to be successful but isn't always the traditional way to do it so I was really proud of the work we did and the way we did it. Now there are other online questions and they want to know if you personally are going to be working in the next presidential elections if you want to take a role or what what's the plan? It's our premiere now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the next Tuesday <laughs> on Liberal Live. You know um, Campaigns are like drugs in some ways, you know? I mean, it's really yes. hard to, to walk away. I've been saying for a very long time I was not going to do any more campaigning, but I will be um, honored to work for whoever the Democratic nominee is. And, you know, I obviously have little kids now, and that's a little bit more to juggle, but I am, uh, whether it's a volunteer or something else, I'll be happy to work for whoever wow. our nominee is. Well, it's really an honor to have you with us at the 
Liberal, Par Liberal Party of Canada convention. I mean, uh, people are excited. I know you have a big talk to give. I mean, we hear on our earpiece that there's hundreds of people uh. who are going in the rooms, not to put any pressure. Uh. You've been <laughs> under pressure before and you succeeded very well. So I think uh, we may take, do we have time for one last question from our community? And you are right, actually, Twitter is saying that it's standing room, the, the, the Obama sessions are filled to capacity. <laughs> um, so a, a combined question from Zian Dajneh and Brian Mills. So first off, how do you keep members engaged in fighting for making positive changes that they believe in? And at the same time, how can a political party harness successful organization uh, to, in maintaining energy levels and engagement high in non-election periods? Okay, so for you to be able to hear that question, how do you maintain the energy level in a campaign process? You know, you're talking about engaging youth and engaging uh, people differently. How do you maintain the energy? Because there are l lulls, eh, in the campaign process. You know, that's such an important question and a hard one. And I think that goes back to some of the things that we've already been talking about. How do you make the experience fun? How do you sure. weave sure. political organization into the fabric of people's own lives so it seems like something they're doing every week and every day and not something that um, is hard, that is too much of a challenge for them? So, it's a, you know, nobody's cracked the code on how to keep a long campaign going, but I think there's a lot of ways to make it fun. Um, and really, at the end of the day, it's about empowering people to know and believe that if they are part of this process and they work hard, they're going to make a difference. Thank you very much, Jennifer O'Malley Dillon. Terrific to have you here. And you're going to go to a packed room because we we're that. calling them the Obama sessions now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> people are really interested in what you have to say. And we're going to take a quick commercial break now. Thank you very much Thank for you. your answers. Thanks Thank so you much. very much. Thank